How you doing? This is John from John's Longbox, and today I'm looking at the Just Society of America, DC Comics, February 07. This is Jeff Johns, Dale Eaglesham, and Artie Bear. Artie Bear. I just love this painted cover. These are the... Uh, the Justice Society was DC's uh, first super team, and they had the original superheroes. And after the crisis on Infinite Earth, everything got merged together, and, and a lot of this became super confusing. So uh, if you ask me, the crisis on Infinite Earth was... was a, its goal, it, it was a failure in its goal, in that its goal was to streamline and make the DC universe more uh, newbie-friendly and easy to follow. Instead, it just, just created a mess. Again, I, I, I thought there was no problems. Dif people, you know, multiple timelines and multiple parallel, everybody's used to that. It's, it's, it's almost tried at this point. So, But I'm, I'm going to go through the list of, of who the, This is Star, uh, Starman, and if I remember correctly, look, look at my hand, I still have paint on me. <laughs> this is Starman. Uh, he, he's Starboy from the Legion of Superheroes back in time. And if I remember correctly, he was like crazy. This is Commander Steel. This is uh, Star Girl, who was uh, uh, carrying the legacy for the Star Spangled Kid, and this character—I remember her first name is Courtney. I forget what her last name is. And, oh, yeah, there's a TV show. I haven't seen it yet. Star Girl's supposed to be really good. I like the actress who plays her. She perfect. She looks like a mirror image of, of her. But she was based on uh, Jeff Jones's sister, who who died in real life. So this is a character that's near and dear to Jeff Jones. I keep seeing Jeff Jones, but his name is Jeff Jones. This is Liberty Bell. This is Our Man. He, he takes a pill, and he gets super powerful for one hour. And, of course, they did stories with him being addicted to it. This is the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. And I, uh, I, I love his idea that uh, the guy who created him, why can't I remember his name, but the creator was, was in a Manhattan subway, and he saw a, a train... A, a, a railway worker carrying a Green Lantern walking through the subways, and that was the inspiration for the Green Lantern. That's why he has an old st fashion style Green Lantern. This is Dr. Midnight, you know, doctor to the superheroes. This is Wildcat. I've always had a fondness for Wildcat. Ted, Ted Grant, boxer, who became a superhero. He has no powers. Well, they gave him the power that he has nine lives. And uh, I don't know if they ever gave the origin for that, but one, one day he was killed, and then the next issue he just jumped up and said, I'm Wildcat, I got nine lives. And then they say that he always has nine lives, so basically he's he's immortal. This is Carter Hall, Hawkman. He, this version, he was an archaeologist, and very confusing story, because they merged, they did merge, you know, so Jeff Johns just said they're all true. <laughs> you know, every, every past version of Hawkman is, is true at the same time. So, you know, whatever whatever you want to believe about Hawkman. But the original one was Carter Hall. He was an Egyptologist. And I believe he found this medallion. And it, it converted like a reincarnation and stuff like that. So uh, he, he got the memories of everybody else who was ever Hawkman. And jumps back like every generation that's on Earth, every generation back on... Uh, uh, Thanagar, I think, is the name of the planet. So, because the ancient Thanagarians visited Egypt and crash landed and left that medallion, and this this magical metal or whatever metal traps your soul to it, binds it. So everybody who wears it kind of gets their soul possessed of, in the memories of the other person. It's actually kind of kind of cool. I'm I'm not doing it justice explaining. This is the Red Tornado, and that's all I remember about her. Jay Garrick, the original Flash. Just something about that costume. Just it just kills me. This is a his his name was Nuclon and Infinity Incorporated a name that I I, I just even hate saying Nuclon Nucle, but I think they they changed his name to uh, Nuke or or I, I, I know they updated his name, but that is uh, definitely a better costume. This is Mr. Terrific. Mr. Terrific was a uh, originally the original Mr. Terrific was like just the perfect human. Uh, why why can't I remember his name? But uh, just everything about him. Like if we were playing a role-playing game, he would have like 18s in every stat. And I think he gave his life to save everybody. And then this is his protege, 
Mr. Terrific, and he, he, he took the mantle of Mr. Terrific. Um, this is Sandman. I think that's the Wesley Dodd Sandman. Wes, that is one of my favorite DC characters. Just just a cool costume. This co costume is a little bit more uh, science fiction-y and everything, but the original, he just had a gas mask and that fedora. Uh, just great. The Sandman Mystery Theater. When I could find the rest of my comics, because right now they're just... Indiana Jones boxes upon boxes with no order. I, I gotta I gotta show you uh, Sandman Mystery Theater. This is uh, Johnny Thunder. I talked about the Johnny Thunder before. He, the original Johnny Thunder was the seventh son of a seventh son, and he had a genie. Well, he he that Johnny Thunder. Uh, I think they wrote him off with the Alzheimer's disease. I mean, he, he was old man. And then there was a female Johnny Thunder, and now he's he's the current Johnny Thunder. And then that's Power Girl. Power Girl was a uh, Superman's cousin from from Earth Two, and it's funny because after the crisis she didn't fit in because there was no original Superman, so uh, she went through this identity crisis where she thought she was descended from Atlanteans. They tried to fix the story, and then Jeff Johns just said, "No, she's Supergirl from Earth from a universe that was destroyed." So rather than they up the stakes, so rather than just being like Superman is the sole survivor of a planet that was destroyed. She is the sole survivor of a universe that was destroyed. And all this, and I didn't even open up the comic yet. <laughs> okay, here's the splash page. Perfectly good splash page as far as I'm concerned. There they are all in that. That's, that's Johnny Thunder's Thunderbolt. And uh, this version of Sandman can travel through, uh, through silicon and sand. Like he's literally made of, of sand and can travel like Swamp Thing. So, the DC started calling this the Trinity: Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. I, I don't have to explain their names, and they're just talking. And these three are like the old statesmen. Even Superman has to respect Jay Garrick, Alex Scott, and Ted Grant. Ted Grant, they kind of retro, uh, retroactively inserted him into everybody's origins. Like if if you are a, a fighter, if you know, if you're like a Batman or that type of, of level of a fighter, he trained you. So he's like the, just the, that's his, my, that's my superhero theory. The, the specialist is the best. His specialist is, he's a hand-to-hand -hand combatant. That's it. So he's got to be, by my rules, he's got to be, and John Byrne, John Byrne came up with that. He's got to be the best hand-to-hand -hand fighter. So Batman's specialty is he's the world's greatest detective. Okay, he's not the world's greatest hand-to-hand -hand combatant. That goes to Ted Grant. So now they're just going over, and geez, look, a lot, of, lot of words, but I like that. Uh, you know, you're going to pay this money for a comic book, I, I want to read a story. I don't want to just have my hair dried by uh, flipping pages. They call me Mr. America. Yes, this was an actual DC hero back in, in the 40s, Mr. America. Marvel had Mrs. America, or Miss America, and... His wife was killed. Notice this is computer colored. Uh, I, I'm sure this can't be the first computer color, but you could tell it's computer coloring because uh, the gradations and the color. You know, back with the uh, the old coloring, you, you didn't. They colored with pen and ink, so th this would all be one color. You know, you didn't just, unless maybe they they put a little white over that. But for the most part. Each color would be one color, but they could actually, like, look at this. You can see the shading. You can, usually when you see s the sky, they, they uh, you can really tell it's, c it's computer colored. Castlevania. These are different ads because this is a totally different era of comics. This, this is the, well, I don't want to say the newest because I did Yusagi or Jimbo. So here you have Mr. Terrific, Michael Holt. That is just a cool name, Michael Holt, the third smartest man in the world. <laughs> the third. So who's the first and second? Okay, Power Girl, Kara zor Kryptonian survivor from a parallel universe. And I told you the story, Wally Wood, in order to mess with the Comics Code Authority, every time he drew her, he create Wally Wood created a Power Girl. And Wally Wood, that, t talk about a, a comic book creator who deserves a movie. That guy was just a torture genius. There's no other way to describe him. Just He, he was a drop-dead alcoholic. Just, just couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't
couldn't control his demons. And if I remember correctly, and I, I think he finally succumbed to alcoholism. And but there was no denying his talent. The guy, man was super talented. And uh, Will Eisner hired him to 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 draw the spirit, and he did that the the famous spirit goes to the moon stories. But uh, his alcoholism was so bad that that the Will Eisner had to fire him and, and 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 finish the stories. And Will Eisner was trying to move on to other things. But anyway, he he was one of these guys that would would just fight. So he of course he had to fight with the comic book code authority. And one of the things is you couldn't draw like women with big old boobies. And so every time he drew Power Girl, he he made her chest bigger and bigger and bigger. So she's just accepted as the uh, big chested superhero girl. I mean. Right, body diversity. Here we go. That's our man, Rick Tyler. He's the son of the original Our Man, and the original Our Man, he used to put like ads in the newspaper, like the uh, '40s version of uh, Craigslist, for like you know, I'll, I'm the man of the hour. I'll come and I'll, I'll solve whatever problems you have, and from like moving furniture to beating up the mafia or whatever, you know. And uh, eventually, he, he was just like a guy in like a trench coat and a hat, and then. He made a costume, and then eventually he became like a multimillionaire with with Tyler Chemicals, and then uh, he he ended up dying. And I think his heart gave out from the stress of of, of, of uh, the chemicals that would give his strength power. And now his son, did, and that's one of the things that they had to do was like develop like a non addictive, non dangerous form of Miraclo. That's the name of the pill, Miraclo. That's Liberty Bell, Jesse Chambers, All American Powerhouse. Star Girl, Courtney Whitmore, and I already told you her story. Doctor Midnight, Doctor Peter Cross, superhero surgeon. I don't know. I always like, I always like Doctor Midnight. Um, the original Doctor Midnight, something happened. I can't remember. Caught in an explosion or something like that, and his eyes got damaged, and he was blind. So he he was the first blind superhero even before Daredevil, and. But he wasn't really blind. His eyes were just super sensitive. So with normal, normal, his eyes were so sensitive that normal light, he, he he was overwhelmed and couldn't see. So he could see in perfect darkness. So he wears night vision goggles. He also has the same condition. And uh, so he, he could see in darkness and with these special goggles on, he could see during the light. And then he throws these bombs that create like a acrid smoke that would, that would cause uh, darkness. He called them the blackout bombs. So give himself a tactical advantage, and here they are. I, 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 they, they met. They meet in some mansion, and they're reforming the Justice Society, and they're going over all the candidates. And that's one of their their rules: is there has to be some sort of legacy to uh, to uh, to join. Just, 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 I just realized I didn't talk about Liberty Bell, Jesse Chambers. If I remember correctly, this this is a uh, Jesse Quick. Her father was Johnny Quick. He was like a, you know, a, a copy of the Flash. Look, look at that cool ring. That's the green light, the original green light the ring. Uh, and the, her mother was the original Liberty Bell. And if I remember, the, the original Liberty Bell was like a hand-to-hand -hand fighter and had, had like sonic abilities, much like a, the Black Canary. Well, their daughter, the, J Johnny Chambers discovered like the, uh, the speed formula and he would recite this nonsense string of, of, of mathematical numbers and it would give him a burst of super speed. And then Jeff Johns later made it that he was uh, had the speed force like the Flash. Well, their daughter, she she became uh, Jesse Quick for a while, and now and then she took Liberty Bell. I think she's back to being Jesse Quick, and I think she's on the Flash TV show. So here they are. They're uh, looking at photographs of of the uh, candidates for the to be in the new Justice Society. And look at this. Y you can see the dot matrix. That's a that's fake, but that's you know they're trying to copy, make it look old. But these these are the original Justice Society members. There you go. That's the Sandman. That's still not the Gas Mask comic. That's more of his superhero comic uh, costume, rather. I, I like the classic glass uh, Gas Mask. This is the original Adam. He was oh, I can't remember his name, but he he was short, so they called him the Adam. Apparently, that I talked to my dad. That was like a a, a gag name for. Uh, short people they called him the atom or molecule or something like that and he just wore a costume and and fought crime later on one of his villains had like a radioactive power and that gave him like the standard array of superhero powers super strength tight endurance and, and limited invulnerability 
and uh, for whatever reason, his godson, Nuklon, got, got that power. I, I, I don't understand. Oh, as I knock everything over. That's uh, the Sandman, Wesley Dodds. That's the Spectre, Jim Corrigan. He was a cop who was killed in the line of duty, and he was sent back to, to Earth to uh, avenge. And he, he was a ghost. And I think his original set of powers, he was just like he could pass through walls. He was strong, you know. And then he became, like, godlike to the point where he was, like, the right hand of vengeance of, of, of God. And he, he could do anything. So he's one of those power, you know, one of those, he, he, you know, just undefined powers and therefore all powerful. Jay Garrick. Uh, look, look at that. I just love that horrible costume. <laughs> it's so bad, it's great. Hawk, the original Hawkman mask. This is Doctor Fate. Now that is a cool costume. If ever look, look at that costume, the blue and gold. He was a Kent Nelson archaeologist, and he found this this helmet, the helmet of Naboo the Wise. And he would put the helmet on, and he would become possessed or influenced, depending upon the writer, by Naboo. And he was the Doctor. He was Doctor Strange before Doctor Strange. And then uh, he started to lose... Oh, man, I keep knocking the comic. He started to lose touch w w with reality and become more in tune with uh, the, the elder reaches of, of the cosmos. So, so he started to fear that he was losing his humanity. So he, he... I don't know where it came from, but he had a, a half mask. So, you know, it looked like, like a mask like that, but it was this metal mask. And when he put it on, he, he, he became like magical Superman. He could fly and stuff like that. So I, I think the readers started to abandon him because he, he became more uh, out of touch. And then they gave him the standard set of superhero power. So somewhere there's that half mask. I wonder, I wonder what happened to that. That's a good story. The half mask. I already talked about him. And that's the original Hour Man. And then this was in the 70s. That's the, the, that's the Star Spangled Kid. And, and in his hand is the... Uh, oh, there's no Star Man. Starman became my favorite member of the Justice Society. He's not even in these pictures. But anyway, Star Spangled Kid uh, got Starman Star Rod. I, I, I talked about Starman in one of my previous uh, videos, and he had the Star Rod, and then later on he had the belt. The Starman devised both, and he used one at, at a time, and then Stargirl uses all of them, the rod, the big staff, and the belt. That's the original Robin. He, he grew up and stopped wearing shorts. Um, and then this is, uh, so this is like the 70s version. This is like the, the 90s version of, of, of uh, the Justice Society. Uh, like I said, he, Sandman, I think his name was just Sand at this point, Stargirl. That's Star, Starman. You, I, you've seen him in my videos, if you've seen my vi videos. I, I love this comic. That's uh, Black Canary. Uh, they changed, that's right, Nuklon. Oh, God, that name just pains me to say. They changed his name to Adam Smasher, which is just a better name. And this is Hawk Girl. And this is Our Man. There's a robotic Our Man. And he, Grant Morrison, uh, if you know that writer, he's out there. He had this, like, it was called the Whirlagog. And it was this, like, shape-shifting cosmic thing like like if you see the, the Avengers movies the Tesseract was this all powerful you know the uh, the 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 item the the MacGuffin well the Orlagog was this MacGuffin that was all powerful and he incorporated it and he he could control time he he was just like all powerful this all powerful android from 3000 years in the future so you know they're discussing the past versions of, of the Justice Society and these three you know the, you know, the chairman here they are, you know, Ted Grant, Wildcat, talking, 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 and then that's Adam Smasher now, that's his new costume, that, it, it's, it's taking the original Adam's colors, the blue and the gold, and then taking his, uh, his chest device, his symbol from, from, uh, from, uh, when he was in his other, oh, I, I just, blanked up, but I, j I just love this. This is this is just a great costume. I don't know who, who that is. I literally haven't read this since 2007. And here they are. Fighting and some action. And and just notice how much has gone on. How much work. This is, if you, if you ask me, this is still like 
old school comics. It's not that long ago, 2007, and there's still so much dialogue, so much is happening. I, I, I love it. I love it. Just fighting. But, I mean, if this was a Jack Kirby Stan Lee comic, there would just be four subplots going on and everything. So, you know. But this this is Jeff Johns. He he his love of comic books is is just can't be beat. And then he beats this guy. Uh, just fight to help the cops. And I think his powers are super strong. He he could get tall, and then uh, I think he could phase through walls. I I know he could phase through walls, but maybe, maybe does he still have that power? It's funny the DC comic advertising Marvel, but it's more a Walmart DVD thing. Okay, yeah, th these two I think got, actually got married. I wonder if that, if that's still going on in, in, in uh, modern DC. Our Man, Rick Tyler, Jesse Chambers. They were a good couple. Finally remember this comic. You know, Jeff Johns just, he did a great job. See, he, if he had done the Crisis on Infinite Earth, may, maybe he would. But the thing is, he he knew the law, well Marv Wolfman knew the law too so that's that's not fair to say Marv Wolfman wrote the Crisis on Infinite Earth, but uh, just Jeff Johns he just does what John Byrne did in the height of John Byrne's talent is he took logical consequences and logical uh, leaps of faith and, and and just filled in gaps and everything and 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 it and it just worked so well like his Flash run was just outstanding his Green Lantern run was 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 amazing. And that's why I picked up that comic, Geiger. I haven't read it yet because I missed the first issue. Can't, can't read issue two without reading issue one. So here's Mr. America bashing in and, and fighting. What, what is this guy's name? Catalyst. Catalyst. Cool powers. Catalyst can touch you and cause chemical reactions. So he could, like, oxidize the blood and, or cause the iron in your blood to rust. Just, just That's just a cool power. I'm pretty sure I ripped it off in, in my superhero campaigns Final Fantasy okay I didn't know what that was I'm, I'm, I don't know much about video games and this is uh, the Red Tornado and her gag is that she doesn't stop talking she's a motor mouth she just keeps on talking 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 never stops talking and uh, you know every time you see her it's just like long word balloons and everything and because of that, she's considered odd and quirky, and she doesn't really have that many friends. And her grandmother was the original Red Tornado, and the Red Red original Red Tornado was like a gag superhero. And she was like, she had no powers, and she just like wore like like a thermal underwear, and had like a towel as a cape, and then wore like a, a pot on her head. And she just called herself the Red Tornado. And she just went out and like got like gang members out of her neighborhood. So she was like a street vigilante. And then her, I think she was a backup in other people's comics. And got popular and then joined the Justice Society. And I, I, I don't know how she got powers. I, I kind of forget. But here she is, you know. You're the Justice Society. I already introduced these. Oh, yeah. Here, here she is. Ma Hunkle. That's Ma Hunkle. Baby Hunkle kidnapped by mad scientist. That's granddaughter. For current, okay. Yeah, so I think when the mad scientist kidnapped her as a baby, she got she got powered. So I can't believe this happened. This, this is a, this gag. She just won't stop talking. Do, 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 do. Power Girl covers her. No. I, I like Power Girl. She's always like. She's a Kryptonian. She's like Superman. She, everything about her is super. So in she's Karen Star uh, is her is her human secret identity. And uh, Karen Star, if I remember correctly, like runs some like multimedia conglomeration or, or or manufacturing plant. I forget. But she's like the CEO of a company and everything. So here here they go. You know they're, they're going around. This is just a like if this was the Expendables or or whatever. They're going around recruiting the team. You know or or, or the heist movie. Okay, Star, that Star Man. This is like the fifth or sixth name Star. I mean, the name of Star Man is cool. You gotta have Star, but he's actually from the future. And I, at this point, I don't think they they uh, they reveal that. So he he got he time traveled back, and I think it messed with his mind. So he's kind of uh, 
crazy. And Starman's, this version of Starman's power is uh, gravity control. So, hmm, it looked heavy. And I don't even think he understands because his mind is damaged because of the time traveling. Star, Star Boy, who becomes Starman later on, is from the future in the Legion of Superheroes. And, ah, oh man, I, I got to talk about the Legion of Superheroes at some point. So here he is, you know, and that's definitely an homage to the uh, the Superman movie, the first Superman. It's like a Superman pose with the helicopter. I got you, you got me, but who's got you? So here he is, you know. I th I think he's just talking nonsense. Yes, it's Wednesday. I'm gray, you know. Color kids and polar boys, all four colors. Yes, so color the color kid and polar boy. These are superheroes from his era and time, but he's just nutty. And there's Doctor Midnight. It's just just a cool costume. They they did a Doctor Midnight miniseries where he lived in a in a, a town called uh, Portsmouth, and Portsmouth was a, a rip off of Innsmouth from H.P. Lovecraft, and he fought like H.P. Lovecraft cultists and, and 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 the Deep Ones and everything like that. I, I just loved that. I thought that was a good comic. See, there's her, the power belt that was created by the original Starman, and then this is the rod that the the that the 90s version of the Starman willed, and I don't think she has the, the, the rod at, at this point. So, you know, they come to get Starman out of the loony bin because he's super powerful and crazy. And, you know, he has to... Time travel could be could be dangerous, is, is the point to, point to that. When they hear Ted Grant is, is, is training, hit, hitting the bags, and they're talking about, can we recruit him? He's crazy. And here's a Mr. America. I, I forget why his wife was killed, and he just went on the deep end. And I, th him, him going on this this violent rampage is the, the impetus to get the uh, the uh, the Justice Society back. And here, that's the original Red Tornado, Ma Uncle, and that's her granddaughter. And she's given her blessings to, to join the, the Justice Society. And here, here they are joining the team. You know, I, I love this. They were like a a good loving couple. And of course, because it's comic books, that I, I, does anybody know if they lasted? I, I don't know. And here, here's all the team getting together. Here's him uh, checking out Power Girl. Can't you blame him? And here, Flash and Green Lantern make their appearance. She's just talking a mile a minute. Mr. America jumping. That's him. And smashes. And... His name is Tom. He crashes. He's your son. Ta-da! The big reveal. The Batman Confidential. There's a million Batman comic books coming. So these are previews for for the uh, Justice Society. And this is the Kingdom Come version of, of Superman. He's... Uh, remember I talked about Marvels? If, when I talked about the Marvel Vault. And then... Uh, Mark Wade and, and Alex Ross did the same thing for DC. Well, they did Kingdom Come, and it was set in the future. And it was like, you know, Superman is disappointed in the new whippersnapper super, superheroes. And the new superheroes are, are, are violent, and they're all, like, media-obsessed. And, you know, just think of, like, if all the guys from the Jersey Shore became superheroes. You know, and you're Superman. Wouldn't you be disappointed? It was a really great story. And uh, this is supposed to be the original Superman you know, the one I talked about the other day in Action Comics, the Silver Age. So he's just, like, godlike. Not limited like the the modern Superman. And so when he shows up, it, it's some serious business. And that's who Power Girl is related to. And that's the first issue of the Justice Society. I, I thought it was a good, meaty comic. I've talked about it for a half hour. I, I, I could go on and on and on and, and gush about, the, about, you know. This is, I mean, I love all these characters, but... The, this guy, what a good writer. Dale Eaglesham, he, he's a solid artist, as, as you could tell. And Artie Tiber, just, just a good guy. It's just, just, a, just a classic team. You can't go wrong with this. I, I highly recommend this series. The, the only problem is, with this cast of thousands, your favorite character wouldn't get a, a spotlight for a couple of months, you know? So, just like the Legion of Superheroes, Legion of Superheroes had like 30, 40 members so your, your favorite character you, you, you probably wouldn't even see him for six months and then there'd be a story about your favorite character 
you know, and then same thing happened here. So Jeff Johns even said that he, after a while he got out of control with, uh, with, with too many characters. But, you know, he, he just loves all these characters. He wanted to uh, talk about them and, and write about them. I, can you blame them? I mean, l l look at this. This is just, just an amazing array. All right, well, there you go. That's the Justice Society. Justice Society of America from, from the uh, early 2000s, 2007. I think that there, there was another another uh, Justice Society that came out in the 90s, and that was also Jeff, uh, Jeff Johns. And that, again, just suffered from... A, well, it started out amazing, and uh, just so many characters bloat, and then he tried to tone it down again, and he got out... He, he, he says he just gets out of control. But there you go. And uh, the Justice League, they always try to keep around seven or eight members. But the Justice Society, just... just it's it's where the old superheroes go to go to. I don't want to say die, but it's where the old superheroes go and get their stories told. There you go. I, I I'm gushing. I just love I just love everything about this. All right, please like, please subscribe. Get your kids to subscribe, even if they don't watch the videos. <laughs> All right, see you around. Bye bye. Thanks.